everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Foreign BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe door review, and today I'll be taking a look at one of the G.I. Joe team's very first accessories, the 1982 Flak Attack Cannon. Now, Flak gives off the impression of the old German 88mm anti-aircraft cannon, but here Flak actually stands for Field Light Attack Cannon. But unlike all the other 1982 vehicles and accessories, with acronyms, this actually doesn't line up, because here we have C instead of the K, but whatever. The flat cannon makes its first animated appearance in the old Sunbow uh, 1983 miniseries, the five-part miniseries G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, better known as the mass device, in part one. But try as I might, I couldn't find any comic book appearances. Not even in the background, which I was sure, I was sure that I would find the flak being rendered in the background of, uh, of G.I. Joe's hidden headquarters. But that's kind of the point. In the comic book, the G.I. Joe team was a highly mobile uh, strike force with a hidden headquarters. And the flak is kind of a stationary defense cannon. So it doesn't, it actually doesn't really make much sense for it to be used in the comic books. Whereas in the cartoons, they did have that big open um, headquarters and they, were, they operated quite openly as well there. Just like the Ram, the Flak was actually available in two different box sizes. So there is actually a rarer, larger box size variant than this. This is just the standard size. So you can check out how the graphics are laid out on this standard size box. On the larger, rarer box, however, I don't believe the G.I. Joe uh, sold separately was on this side. I think it was on this side. And it definitely didn't see, didn't have this C back panel for actual size. Um, that text wasn't there at all. I believe that was a sticker or something like that. And speaking of the retail box, this isn't the only way you can get a flak. In late 1984, you can also mail away for it. And this uh, mail order was actually good for up to like 1986, I believe. And then there was a second run for 1991. The Flak is a simple toy compared to the other vehicles and accessories in the same series, like 1982 Ram or 1982 Jump. However, what this lacks in, well, parts, it more than makes up for in its size. It dwarfs the other toys in the same size range. As a matter of fact, here's a three and three quarter inch figure. Just to give you a sense of scale, this is actually a very significant uh, sized cannon, really. However, I did mention that it was kind of simple. And in fact, what we have here is, of course, your seat for your figure and some controls here but they don't move around. What we have here is just a, a cannon which kind of ratchets up and down. You can move it a little bit downwards actually, but it's mostly just, uh, it mostly just ratchets up into this position. And on the bottom here, this base part, it swivels around on this base. And finally, we have positionable legs here. So if you're putting it on an uneven surface, you can maneuver these things so that it has a, a sort of a level position. Here, I'll just demonstrate it by putting it halfway onto this book here. And you can just maneuver one side of the foot like that, and it's level. Despite being a very simple affair, not only is the cannon extremely detailed, but I really love how they did the seat. I kind of wish they did this more on other vehicles, because even though it doesn't have a back peg, the figure actually sits very well in here and is very well supported. On the stock here, we have these little protrusions which are for the feet. But more than that, we have these very tiny um, hand stocks. And unlike any other vehicle in the 1982 range, I actually would recommend 
putting the hands on these stocks because they're very skinny and the figures actually um, can't hold on to them. So you have a figure just sitting like that and there you go. You can maneuver this thing up and down and the figure sits in there and looks very natural and doesn't flop out. And now it's time for Does a Modern Figure Fit in It? As usual, I'll be using my 2009 Rise of Cobra Footloose figure as my example of a modern figure to be sitting in the seat. I'll just prearrange him a little bit here. And one of the things I noticed right away is if you're trying to fit his, uh, fit his feet on the footrests, he has a little bit of trouble actually reaching the uh, controls here. It still looks okay, but you can actually just have him kind of slouching a little bit further in the seat. And it looks a little bit better that way. The Flak was a very cheap and affordable accessory cannon back in 1982. As a matter of fact, it still sort of is today. If you're looking for one on the aftermarket, it's fairly easy to find one completely intact with all of its parts. Well, for the few parts that it actually does have. Not so much for what superseded it. The 1983 Whirlwind Twin Battle Gun, which has a lot of parts and was actually kind of mobile and a towed vehicle. So you still have that sort of a mobile strike force feeling with this toy rather than a sort of a stationary base defending cannon the way the Flak was. You will of course pay a lot more for the uh, Whirlwind Twin Battle Gun because of the amount of parts which can get lost or broken on the Whirlwind Twin Battle Gun. But that in turn was superseded by the Mountain Howitzer, which is a far more real-world type of a uh, cannon. Again, it had a mobile toad feature, which again played more to the uh, mobile strike force feeling of the early G.I. Joe. So while the toy itself is fairly simple, it also does have the benefit of being also a very sturdy toy on top of that. But you have to give props to whoever did the blueprints for the flak because just look at this long list of things that the flak was supposed to have done in real life. That's amazing. With an acronym like flak, you might be thinking that this toy is designed around the German 88 millimeter Flugen Flugen Kanon. Um, Flugzeugabwehrkanone. Yeah, that. But it's actually not. Sure, it does have the features of many generic uh, anti-aircraft cannons. So, even though it's actually almost completely fantasy-based, you can tell right away what it is. You have your seat at the back, you have your action, you have your, your base, your swiveling base, and of course you have your large cannon barrel. But this thing has a lot of science fiction um, designs in here, which actually look really good. They don't really stand out as much as you might think. Especially this brace here, which connects the uh, action to the barrel. That's something that you often see in sci-fi pistol designs. And one of my favorite little sci-fi touches is, of course, this very square scope on the top which, as soon as I saw it, reminded me of the holographic uh, sights which you saw on, you can see on some modern pistols. Of course, according to the blueprints, this is supposed to be a laser rangefinder, which is still something which is very sci-fi and very futuristic for what is essentially a very old-fashioned type of defense. The flak actually kind of does break down into several parts, which of course you had to build yourself when you took it out of the box. The individual uh, legs here actually do remove from the uh, swiveling base ring here, as well as the seat actually does pop off. So if you're 
looking for one on the aftermarket you do have of course I have to make sure that you have all the parts one thing that's always struck me as very odd is whenever I see this thing just sort of without all its parts the uh, actual base doesn't uh, remove from the action or the barrel here but doesn't this look like a type of a sci-fi pistol my hands are a little bit big uh, but I'm sure a child's hand would actually make this look like a rather uh, fancy little sci-fi pistol. Now I know I give the attack cannon a lot of flack for being a stationary defensive weapon made for a mobile strike force, yes pun intended, but the following year in 1983 Hasbro did make a standalone headquarters. And that's where a lot of people, I believe, actually wind up uh, using the flak in. As a matter of fact, Hasbro was so forward-thinking for this poor old flak cannon that in the motor pool section of the 1983 headquarters, there is totally a place for you to put the flak cannon. If you notice, these little indents here, here, and the shared indent here, that's actually where you put the feet for the flat cannon. And with the flat cannon in that position, you can securely raise and lower it, just like you would any vehicle in there. accessory cannon not so for what it supersedes in late 1984 the flak was available for mail order well that's all the time I have right now Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.